Hey everyone, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, the content executive at Higher Things and Paige is back. Paige, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing okay. I am tired, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about cool stuff. Uh, an important thing today. We're gonna talk about women in the church. So um, instead of me mansplaining to you what it what it is, um, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about women in the church as a woman in the church. Okay. Well. Um... If people don't know, I'm actually in school for theology, and I'm planning on becoming a deaconess for the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. So um, this is a really important topic that we know and talk about. So um, women in the church aren't necessarily meant to be the head of the church like a pastor is. We're meant to serve. So one thing that we hear a lot is that the pastor is the voice box of Christ or of the gospel, and then that the women are the hands and feet of Christ. We're meant to serve and to show mercy and kind of use a gospel-oriented approach in bolstering the um, faith and resolve of a congregation. Okay. And, and pastors are meant to serve too. Um, they're, they're not like the boss of the church or the CEO of the church, or at least they shouldn't consider themselves that. Uh, we, we serve by saying the God stuff. Uh, we, we speak, but, but there's also other, other roles in the church. Um, and, and you're right. In, in our particular church body, um, men are pastors. Um, and that doesn't mean that men are the only one who get to talk about Jesus or, or the only ones who, um, who have leadership roles or the only ones who have, have called positions uh, like, like the deaconess. Um, but at the same time, uh, we, we hold sort of that office separate then from all of the other ones. Um, and that has not caused any consternation at all. Right. Right. Sure. Sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> Why is it problematic? Like, I, I mean, really, I, like, we, we can sort of come out and say this has to do with gender equality right yeah a lot of the um issues that we see in the church of like oh women should be able to be pastors because men can be pastors like that makes sense in like a social setting but we're here talking about a theological and biblical setting um god created us differently he didn't create like he created us equal but equally different like we have equal standings, but we have different roles. And um, in order to maintain like what we do as a church and how the church runs, it would be kind of weird to have a woman as a pastor over a man as a pastor just because of what the Bible explains and tells. Right. So the Bible is, is pretty clear that at least when it comes to uh, the public preaching office, uh, that that women aren't given to serve in this way. Um, and so, I, I mean, we just sort of have to ask the obvious question. Is it because God doesn't think they are capable or at least Paul doesn't think they are capable? Like women are capable of public speaking, right? Oh, definitely. Yes. Okay. Um, Paige, I know you to be a, a brilliant theologian. Thank you. <laughs> probably nicer than me maybe it depends on what we're talking about so like (laughs) if we're just doing this on ability like we have to we have to recognize there there's not something inside of men that makes them more equipped for the ministry and in, in some cases uh sometimes a little bit less um but for some reason you're right god does sort of put this this particular vocation on 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 the guys and not on the girls um I've got, I've got some theories as to why, but I'm, I'm, I'd like to hear yours first. My theory as to why, like, the ministry yeah. set aside for men? Okay, I just wanted to make sure I heard you right on that. Um, so we kind of think of, at least I think of the um, church as Christ's bridegroom, or he's the bridegroom of the church. And so... If you're a bridegroom, wouldn't that like entail a male leadership to the bride, the church? I mean, that's that's kind of all how I've always understood it. That's Ephesians so, five. Yeah. So if if Christ is uh, the the groom and the church is is the bride, uh, then also you get to recognize something kind of cool that uh, well. 
the bride doesn't serve the groom, the groom serves the bride, that the church doesn't sort of earn good graces with Jesus by its good works, but rather Jesus sheds his blood to offer up the church without blemish or spot, uh, according to Ephesians 5. And this is one of those passages, too, that, that everybody sort of gets all in a kerfuffle about because it says, wives submit to your husbands as the church submits to Christ. And we always sort of chop that as the church submits to Christ off and then turn it into some like 1950s misogyny stuff uh, that, that has to do with, with like sandwiches and kitchens, but you're doing it wrong if that's the case and that's a sin, you should repent. Uh, because if, if that understanding of marriage is anything different than Jesus dying on the cross for the church and the husband sacrificing for the wife, you're doing it wrong. This, this is not a question then of, of value because if anything, it would sort of seem like the church is is placed in a greater value even then the son would place his own well-being yeah and that kind of sets wrong like if that doesn't set wrong with you then you need to reevaluate absolutely um and so that that's always kind of where i've i've wondered about uh the office of the holy ministry being for for the guys um you even start to see it uh, like i can tell you about all my bad days but it just sort of sounds like whining but then you sort of have to recognize the uh, the first witnesses of um of the resurrection were not men but women but all of the apostles who were men were martyred but john who died a prisoner in exile maybe just maybe this isn't so much about what what god says who is allowed to do what but so much more who should have to suffer what you know what i mean yeah like um the women like it's kind of the same thing that we were talking about with the bride and the bridegroom like the men are there in kind of the protective role like not saying that women can't be martyred also but like they're the ones who go out and boldly proclaim women can also go out and boldly proclaim but there's just that thing with the men to where they're there and they're protecting and they're serving at the same time. Right. So um, I, as, as, a, as a parent, like I want my kids to be able to face anything the world has to throw at them. But I also I hope they don't have to. Um, I, I think that it's clear that God intends for women to learn all of the secrets of, of the scriptures, that there's not like men knowledge and then women knowledge. And, and it's clear that, that women have important roles in the church throughout the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, it, it's clear the first witnesses of the resurrection were women. Some of the earliest martyrs of the church were women. Women have always had an, an important and vital role in, in the life and health of the church. But what if there was an office that was set aside to take the worst of the brunt? And God actually just, he didn't want the girls to have to suffer that. It's not because they weren't capable, but it's just because he, he really sort of seems like he gives them a, a more precious spot, not because they can't handle it, but just because he doesn't want them to. Right. It's like, honestly, I, that's something that I would not want to do. Like I would rather have someone set aside for me to do that for me because that's how we were created. Mm -hmm. Um, Paige, have they taught you the difference between power and authority at school yet? Um, we've touched on it, but like that was last semester. So uh, it's been a hot second. <laughs> um, so, so power is what you can do. Uh, authority is who you've been given to serve. And we usually mix them up, right? So like in the world, authority means I can boss people around and they can, they have to do what I want. And this has been abused. I, it, it just sadly has. Um, the world talks about authority as if it's for yourself. Um, but for the Christian, authority has always been given to serve other people. It's never for your own good. For, Jesus had all authority in, in, on, on earth given to him from the Father, and he used it not to be served, but to serve. In the same way, when we talk about authority, it, it's a burden. If you're talking about authority and it, it's, it's something that's going to benefit you, you're not being Christian in it. Um, but also, we have to recognize that there are places where authority has been abused, power has been abused, um, that, that men have done bad things to women. And this has sort of left a, a wound in the church that, uh, that is, in a lot of ways, festered. We got to this place because sinners sin, but when the scriptures speak, they talk about an, an ideal place. They, they, they talk about a place where there's forgiveness that rules and that, that mercy should be the thing that's proclaimed. Uh, and inside of that, then, one of the, the great gifts of, of 
the church is that it's not set aside for the people who are without sin, but it's only for the sinners. It makes it a lot messier, but God has set aside one place to preach for that. And, and that's where you would be sure that your sins are forgiven, that, that the bridegroom would speak to the bride in, in language that offers up without blemish or spot. Uh, when we talk about women in the church, how much of this do you think sort of just gets wrapped up in questions of power, questions of, of fear, questions of abuse? And, and how, do you, how do you go about addressing those things? Ooh, that's a lot. Um, so I think like what we kind of did, not necessarily as a church, it just kind of crept in was all the social justice movements and things where the women were trying to be equal to men and saying that they need to have equal power and equal authority. Like you said, those two things kind of get mixed up in the world and in the church. And so I feel like um, in doing that, the women were like, well, why can't we do this? And why can't we do, like, I'm just as qualified as a man. Like, I've done the same thing, like for deaconesses, they go through seminary, they do internships, although different than a vicarage, like they do more or less the same types of training. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, so why can't the woman do what the man does? It's because that's not how God intended. Like the, like you said, the bridegroom is meant to serve the bride. So it's kind of, if you flip everything on its head, then you kind of flip the church upside down. And like, you can't set a church on its roof. It'll crumble. There's this thing Jesus does. Uh, he, he invites the little children to him. And he says, if, if you want to enter the kingdom of God, you must enter as a little child. And that doesn't mean like innocent or trusting. It's helpless. Little children are helpless. Um, that the, the, the highest uh, form of, of worship is to receive, that, that the pinnacle of Christianity is, is to need everything from Jesus. And when we start to paint a picture of the church as the most powerful people get the most important roles and, and they're the real Christians. It, it, so you have to be a man and you have to be a pastor to be a real good Christian. And everybody else is sort of a second class Christian. You flip not only the, the whole church on its, you flip the gospel on its head and, and then you cast off the little children and you say to Jesus, it's not the most helpless that, that will enter the kingdom, but, but those who can take the most by force, that's evil. They, that's, that's out and out evil. Um, when we talk about what it is to, to, to uh, exist inside of the church, I think it's it's really, really important to, to recognize um, that we don't do value in terms of what you can do, but in terms of what God has done for you. And, and there, in your baptism, you have a greater value than any sermon that was ever preached by any saint throughout any time in history. This is what God looks at. And thanks be to God for it. Yeah, I mean, because like you said, with our baptism, that is our identity that's where we go and honestly like it I don't remember what point I was trying to make but like it just lost so if you have something else <laughs> no I mean baptism is is where I would go to um that if if we get lost in terms of of an identity that's that's rooted in works um it gets even darker when we start to to a, a well to identify worth only by what one gender can do. And so the, the pinnacle of, of power is, is masculine strength. Um, well, that's, that seems sexist to me. I might be off base here, but if you're going to judge worth by how many weights you can lift or, or, or any of those kinds of things, you're setting aside something um, good to chase after something different. Why not? Why not if... Why not just sort of recognize that that as we, we we exist inside of this, both of the genders need each other, um, and it's not a greater or less than thing, but a baptized thing, uh, because any other time we start to compare the two, it, it turns against itself, and that that happened at the fall, um, and this was not how it was been given to be that that both genders were supposed to support and, and nurture and love each other, yes, in different ways, but but never in questions of of, of worth or value. That was given by God. Yeah. So uh, when it comes then to women in the church, like what, what's a good place? What do you mean? What does it look like when it's, when it's healthy? What does it look like when it's not healthy? When it's healthy, like um, what I see in a healthy church would be like the pastors, 
the head of the church, but that doesn't mean, like you said, that he's the CEO of the church. He's there to serve his congregants, and um, the women are a part of that. Even if you have a deaconess in the church, she's there to serve the congregants as well, but they serve in different ways. Like, deaconesses serve in acts of mercy, and um, the pastor is more of the, like, public face of the church but that doesn't mean that one is better than the other they just have different roles and like if you would swap those roles then it kind of like we talked about earlier kind of swaps the gospel on its head and kind of doesn't really make much sense for the bride and the bridegroom and for Christ like preaching Christ crucified and what Christ has done it almost kind of casts a shadow on the cross and saying that yes Jesus did this but a woman could have done it too. So it, it kind of makes that point of the power struggle of, okay, well, if a man can do it, then I'm going to do it and I'm going to try and do it better. And it becomes this very weird conflict and almost like race to see who can be the better Christian. And that's just not healthy at all. Right. That that might be sort of a thing to kind of hang on to then in, in terms of, of what it is to be a healthy Christian. Um, because in all honesty, I know a lot of pastors who are not necessarily healthy in their, their sort of devotional life. It, it's, it's a hard gig. You get kicked out a lot. Um, but to be a healthy Christian is, is simply to receive from God over and over again. It, it's, it's to go back to your baptism, uh, to, to daily receive mercy. That's not a gendered thing. Thanks be to God. Yeah, thanks be to God, because otherwise that would be kind of scary. And thanks be to God that God is not scary the, we know that we are saved in our baptism. We don't have to be afraid that, oh, because I'm a woman, my baptism doesn't save me as much as a man's baptism would. Like, it's it's just baptism. We're saved. It's Christ. Amen, and so be it. I don't know. Better place to end you. Nope. <laughs> well, Paige, thanks for joining us. I know this is kind of a tricky topic, but I, I really appreciate your insight here. Yeah, thank you so much for giving me the chance to kind of talk it out with you and get out things that I'm not so sure about and just kind of talk through it. Happy to learn with you. Take care. Bye.